quick transition, which is why. And that music is Andy Palacio and the Garifuna Collective, the Garifuna people based in Honduras. And that song is Watina, or I Called Out. This is Margaret Prescott, host of Sojourner Truth on Pacifica Radio's KPFK, 90.7 FM in Southern California, 98.7 FM in Santa Barbara, streaming, podcasting worldwide on the web at kpfk.org. If you've missed any part of this hour, from 10 this morning for 90 days after that, just go to kpfk. Dot org, scroll down to archives, click on Sojourner Truth, you'll be able to hear the show in its entirety, download, and you can subscribe for a free podcast. We are now going to turn our attention to a new documentary film called Whitewash. Uh, it explores the complexity of race in the United States through the eyes of the ocean via the history of African Americans and water culture from slavery, civil rights, wade-ins to surfing at California sites in contemporary times. It also um, tells us some of the history of surfing. Uh, a lot of people didn't know, don't know about that with the indigenous people of Hawaii, the impact of slavery and Jim Crow laws on the relationship of black people with the ocean. Let's go first to a clip from Whitewash, a brand new documentary film. When I was young, what I really wanted to be, I believe, was just a surfer. And it was just enough for the white boys to be just surfers. The, the problem was I could never just be a surfer because I was always black. You know, I just assumed the stereotype. Blonde hair, blue eyes, tan, you know. Just a dude. <laughs> I said, I think I'm going to be a surfer, man. And the kid looked at me dead in the eye, confused. He was like, surfer? You guys don't even swim. <laughs> I've got a volume of an English sea captain who describes surfing in Ghana. Surfing at Cape Coast Castle. Why did they stop surfing along the coast of West Africa? History is written not by natives. It's written by the white European world at the time. ASP World Tour is like probably very close to 100% white. You see one black guy surfing for every 100 white guys surfing, you know, or more. I was made fun of uh, at school, walking down the street with my surfboard, dudes yelling, black people don't surf. So trying to act white. This is a, a overwhelmingly white male sport that um, has been chronicled from Frankie Avalon and these beach uh, movies that came out, particularly in the 1960s. You know, the myth that, that it's a white boy sport, that's absolutely absurd. It comes from a deeper place, way deeper, and it's, it's gonna, it's, it means a lot more. People want to ride these things. They want to have fun, man. No matter where they are, they want to live and catch a wave, too. You know what I mean? And they'll do, do whatever is necessary within their means at that time to be able to ride a wave. God only picked a few black surfers. I'm sure glad I got to be one. <laughs> Alrighty, and that is a clip from the film Whitewash. It, it's going to be screening at the California African American Museum on July 7th, this coming Saturday. And we have two in-studio guests. I'd like to welcome Ted Woods, who is the film's director. Thank you so very much for joining Thank us. Thank you for having me. Uh, filmmaker Ted Woods began work on this documentary film Whitewash in 2006. He's a Chicago uh, area native by birth and was inspired to make whitewash in part due to his friendship with several surfers of African-American heritage and a desire to understand the complex relationship he witnessed they had with this water sport. He began graduate school to pursue advanced studies in cultural anthropology at the University of Southern California and received his bachelor's in peace and justice studies from Fordham University. Hey, the Bronx. That's in right. New York. That's right. Yes. Okay, Chicago to Bronx and now LA. Yep. Yep. All righty. Also in studio with us, I'd like to welcome. Allison Rose Jefferson, who is a historian and author. Thank you so very much for joining us, Allison. Thank you. Um, Allison Rose Jefferson, her interest um, re revolves around the intersection of historical memory, 
U.S. history, Black Angelino history, leisure, and cultural tourism in Southern California during the 20th century, the Great Migration, and uh, the Jim Crow era, and um, also has been publicly recognized. Her research has resulted in other accomplishments to publicly recognize and preserve the overlooked and rich Los Angeles County African American history in the beach community of Santa Monica. Uh, really quite a lot there. Um, but we, we'll have to start with, with the filmmaker. And I want to play a few other clips um, because I, I found the film totally fascinating. I, I, I must say a lot of information didn't know. And um, uh, you know, people think of surfing. You just think of surfing. You don't think there's anything, uh, you know, a story underneath it. So tell us how you got involved with this story. Yeah, I think that uh, that was the way that it sort of started was uh, I moved to Los Angeles wanting to get into documentary filmmaking. And the first friend that I made was uh, Arian Copeland, who was uh, from Ohio, uh, African-American heritage, and a surfer. So it sort of began out of the conversations that I had with him. And as you heard in the clip just a second ago, Rick Blocker says, I just wanted to be a surfer, but I could never just be a surfer because I was black. Mm -hmm. And so I, I used, I wanted to make this film using surfing as a vehicle to explore the complexity of race and racial identity and, and the categories that, that uh, I think American popular culture places us in. Yeah, and you did that and did it quite well. Our KPFK listeners would be interested to know that KPFK's Didon Kamati is actually right. the president of the Black Surfers <laughs> Association and is in the film. That's correct, I'm going to yeah. tease him though, because yeah. in the film he was just sitting on the beach. I didn't see him surfing one lick. So we'll have to clips. check that he out. <laughs> okay, all righty. So uh, Allison Rose uh, Jefferson, uh, the historian um, here, a lot of folks don't know about the history of surfing. When they think of surfing, they think of like white blonde guys, you know, who say dude and hang out around Malibu, et cetera, and really don't know the history of surfing. I, I, I want to go to a clip that talks about that history, but... Um, you're a historian. How, how relevant is this to understanding um, the relationship of black people and the water and surfing? Well, um, surfing is a, 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 a something that's been done around the world, but it really uh, had a, a, a kind of a foundation in, in the uh, South Pacific culture. Mm -hmm. And so the the, the people of the South Pacific who had brown skin were the one who inspired the uh, Anglos in Hawaii to take up the, the, the sport. And in terms of Africa, there was a big African water culture up until we had the slavery uh, ships, the slave ships coming to the uh, west coast of Africa. And all the people moved inland at that point in time on the, the west coast of Africa because the ships were coming and they were being taken away. So we lost a lot of water culture uh, activity during that time period. And then when African Americans came to the United States, uh, well, when they became, Af when Africans came to uh, America and they became African Americans, uh, there wasn't so much opportunity to participate in water sports right. with uh, the early slavery. And in terms of contemporary culture, in terms of modern culture, the 20th century and contemporary culture, it's about access to the beach. And most of the surfing that goes on in the United States is on the West Coast. And so in terms of Southern, and in Southern California, and uh, so as it relates to Southern California culture, uh, we have the ideas uh, in America of the Gidget movies and uh, from the 1950s and these guys on the beach that were blonde and blue-eyed. But there, were, there have been other people doing that. I, I just learned uh, here recently uh, that uh, Marilyn McCoo's brother was surfing. Uh, in the 1950s. Okay, <laughs> so we'll we'll get to that in, in a minute in the inkwell and, and some of what black people faced uh, coming to California. But I want to go to a clip now from this film, Whitewash. It's going to be screening at the California African American Musician uh, Museum on July 7th. And what time is the screening? It's going to be at... It's at 2 o'clock. 2 o'clock. You have to call and make a reservation. Okay. And, and the reserva seats are very limited. It's, we've gotten a really good response, and so we hope... 
that yeah, we'll, we'll give left. we'll give that number out because we yeah. don't want our listeners here at Sojourner Truth to miss out. Um, right. I saw this film. I, I really learned a lot from from this film. Very beautifully shot. Let's go now to a clip talking about Indigenous Hawaiians and and surfing as a spiritual practice, actually. <laughs> <laughs> 